All right, guys, so we have some pretty big free speech news here from YouTube. And this one right here is, is, is personal for me. I got a lot to say about this because YouTube is out of control. I mean, the, the censorship is, is out of control. And some of these so-called misinformation policies are just so silly because YouTube has to continue to do this over and over and over again where they will put a ridiculous policy in place that hinders free speech, a.k.a. speech that doesn't agree with the left or the mainstream liberal media agenda, okay, or the establishment, they censor that. Uh, and then just a few months later or even a few years later, they have to turn around and reverse course because they figured that they're wrong, right? They're either wrong or the hypocrisy of how they enforce the policy is just so in your face that they realize that, okay, this is not a policy that's actually enforceable, okay? And we see that with... A couple policies that YouTube has implemented over the past few years, one having to do with COVID. Okay, we saw what happened with COVID, right? Um, when COVID started, they freaked out and they put in a bunch of policies in place saying that you couldn't say stuff about COVID uh, that, in fact, was true, right? You couldn't make true statements about COVID, masks, the vaccine, because it went against the establishment narrative. Not because the science said that, not because the data showed any of these things, okay? Uh, it's simply because the establishment said that, hey, you're not supposed to come out against wearing masks. You're not supposed to say negative things about the vaccine. You can't make these claims, right? Then turns around, years later, okay, YouTube reverses course and says, hey, you know what? You can now make these claims because we were wrong. Now, <laughs> the whole time when they were enforcing this policy, right, they were banning people, demonetizing people, punishing people for making statements that were true, Right, just for them to turn around later and acknowledge that, yeah, 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 the conspiracy theorists were right. Okay, and they're not going to rectify the situation, right? They're not going to change it and make it right. They're just going to reverse it quietly, okay, and just, you know, sweep it under the rug. They're doing the same thing with their so called election integrity policy, you know, a policy that they only enforced against Republicans and Trump because, you know, Democrats were making claims about the 2016 election being stolen, false claims, right? Claiming that. Trump and Putin were working together as butt buddies to try to overturn the election, right? Uh, YouTube didn't care about people making claims about elections until 2020 when Trump started to make claims about elections that Democrats didn't like. All of a sudden, they care, right? And they basically, again, banned people, kicked people off YouTube, you know, took away their income uh, simply for... Uh, you know, giving an opinion about what they think about the election because apparently that's dangerous, okay? Apparently that's dangerous, okay? But again, you know, it's funny because these social media companies, these same companies, they never really banned anybody or they really punished people who were making claims about police, right? Police being systemically racist, okay? Evil white racist out here trying to kill black men, which uh, gaslit people to go out and to commit acts of violence in the streets that resulted in billions of dollars in vandalism across the country and people losing their lives, business owners losing their businesses. Nobody was ever banned for making that silly claim, right? Even though that claim was not grounded in any real truth or reality. Again, it's just amazing how that works. The double standard here is absolutely amazing. Now, again, this is coming after the CNN town hall in which Trump said multiple times on stage uh, his opinion about the 2020 election. Now, during this town hall, the first thing that went off in my head when Trump started saying that was, well, how is YouTube going to handle this? Because it's fascinating. We all know as independent content creators, right? Independent news, I guess, reporters, if that's what you want to call us, that there's a double standard between what mainstream liberal news is allowed to do and what, again, alternative news is allowed to do, right? Mainstream liberal news can break YouTube's rules all day long and they won't be punished right? Because they're mainstream news. They're going to get preference, right? Because apparently when they say something or when they do something, when they make certain claims or whatever, it's fine. It's, it's public debate, right? They're allowed to have an opinion. But if I or some other, you know, independent outlet or whatever was to make a claim, we're going to be treated differently, right? And I'll give you an example. Um, I noticed this uh, after January 6th. The mainstream liberal media was allowed to play whatever videos or clips they wanted from what happened on January 6th, and their videos never got age restricted, and they never got demonetized, right? They would still run ads on those videos. However, if I was to put in a clip of what happened on January 6th, okay, what happened at the Capitol, uh, it's either going to be given limited ads, which means no ads, you won't be able to make money off the video, 
or or it might get age restricted, right? And I and I noticed that clear double standard very early on, okay, in regards to what the media is allowed to do. Also, when it comes to the origins of COVID nineteen, you really couldn't talk about the lab leak theory until the mainstream liberal media said, oh well, <laughs> it looks like COVID may have come from a lab in China, right? You you couldn't really talk about it before the mainstream liberal media started talking about it. Once the mainstream liberal media started talking about it, then it was like, oh, well, you could talk about it because, again, the double standard would be so in your face that, again, you can't really enforce it that way, right? And that's the same thing that's happening here with YouTube's so-called election integrity policy. Again, I've come up and I've pointed out so many times how Democrats overtly make the claim of how the 2016 election was stolen, right? The false claim. This is what they say, okay? And, again... YouTube never cared about that, and they still really don't care about it. They only really cared about the 2020 election because Trump had an opinion, right, that was different than the Democrats. Again, it's amazing how that works. But now, again, they're in a very, very, very interesting situation because Trump is on mainstream platforms, right, like CNN, okay? And YouTube, if they were actually enforcing their policy equally— would have to have censored that CNN town hall. But it would have been a really, really, really bad look for YouTube to censor a town hall of a major news outlet over that policy, right? It would have been an extremely bad look. So there was no way that that policy, <laughs> the election integrity policy, could have integrity if they did not censor that CNN town hall. So I noticed that after the town hall, YouTube wasn't taking down videos. Right, They weren't actually taking out videos of Trump making that claim. And that, to me, told me that this was going to change, that YouTube realized that we can't really enforce it because this is silly. right? And again, it was a silly policy in the first place that they should have never uh, implemented. But again, this is you know what, what, what we have here. right? This is what we're dealing with. So now they're reversing course because they see that they can't actually enforce this policy with integrity if... We're going to go into an election season where you have candidates like Trump and you have Democrats as well, too, who are going to come out here and make claims about the election. And, and, and again, YouTube is going to have to decide, hey, do we want to censor these people or not? And if they censor them, again, that's going to be a really bad look, which, again, this is why they should have never had a policy in the first place. It's just it's just funny how this stuff always comes full circle every single time, whether it comes to this, whether it comes to vaccines, COVID, masks, whatever. It always comes full circle. So let's read here. In a reversal of its election integrity policy, YouTube will leave up content that says fraud, errors or glitches occur in the 2020 uh, presidential election after other U.S. elections. The company confirmed to Axios Friday. YouTube established a policy in December 2020 after enough states had certified the 2020 election results. Now the company said in a statement leaving the policy in place may have the effect of curtailing political speech without meaningfully reducing the risk of violence or other real world harm. Okay, I mean, it never had any real risk of producing violence or real world harm when you implemented it, right? Again, I could argue that if you are saying that making claims about the election produces real world harm based off what happened on January 6th, I can make the argument that making claims about police produces real world harm, right? Based off what happened with the BLM protest, right? Or I can make claims about talking about any political subject can produce real world harm, right? Again, th this was just a silly thing to have in the first place. Quote, two years uh, tens of thousands of video removals and one election cycle later, we <laughs> recognize it was a time to reevaluate the effects of this policy in today's changed landscape, YouTube said in a statement. Quote, with that in mind and with uh, 2024 campaigns well underway, we will stop removing content that advances false claims that widespread fraud, errors, or glitches occur in the 2020 and other past U.S. presidential elections where you weren't really enforcing it, right, on any other election outside of 2020. Specifically, again, if, if, if you, you were a Republican or conservative and you made claims in support of Trump, right, that's what was being enforced. Yes, but uh, asked how YouTube was specifically able to make that determination. A spokesperson pointed Axios to their statement. YouTube said that it, quote, carefully deliberated this change but didn't provide further examples of what factors or instances it considered when weighing its decision. Well, it was the CNN town hall, right? Because they realized exactly where this could go with major political candidates potentially making these claims, right? You can't censor presidential candidates, right? You can't censor politicians, 
right? That's not a good look, right? It's not a good look, not on a major social media platform. Uh, again, it's just amazing that it took this long for them to realize this. The platform said it will provide more details about its approach to the 2024 election uh, in the months to come. The policy, which will take effect Friday, doesn't change YouTube's other misinformation rules. All right. The big picture. Media companies and tech platforms are wrestling with how to balance curbing misinformation with freedom of speech ahead of the 2024 election. Finding the right balance has far proven difficult. Former President Donald Trump and other elected officials have made election denialism a key uh, tenant of their political platforms ahead of the 2024 election. CNN, for example, received widespread criticism for its town hall interview with Trump last month. Trump repeatedly pushed unproven conspiracies about the 2020 uh, election being rigged during the event, despite the moderator's best attempts to fact check him in real time. Yeah, so yeah, I mean that's why this that's why this happened, right? Um, the town hall basically forced YouTube to make a change because they knew that they could not have a 2024 election season where they're going to be censoring, uh, you know, liberal media outlets <laughs> because they're letting candidates come and talk about. The election, okay? And again, they, they knew that that was just not a good outcome to that, and that's why they did it. So again, low-key, low-key Trump <laughs> kind of forced YouTube to do this with that CNN town hall, if, if you think about it. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black sort of perspective. Peace.